Welcome back to another episode of Message and Call. Today we are going to look at one of my favorite and for me complicated diagram, cumulative flow diagram, CFD. So CFD is uh, very, very popular if you are in the Kanban world. Uh, it is also in Lean. Initially, when I look at it, it is fairly complex and difficult. So today, hopefully, you know, I'm going to pass along what I understand of CFD uh, and then hopefully it will make it easier for you uh, to use this. So let's take a look at CFD. So here we have a sample uh, CFD and this is what it looks like. So cumulative flow diagram is nothing more than just basically on a specific set time, uh, usually it's on a daily basis. All you do is count the number of items, number of work items that you have in the states uh, where they're at. Once you have this data, all you have to do then is uh, go to Excel, put it into Excel, and then transform that into a what we call a stack area chart. Now, one thing as a coach, going to any team, uh, the first thing I would ask for is, can you show me a CFD? Uh, because looking at CFD tells me a lot of things. An example would be a CFD when we look at this. If you look at this one right here, Number one is that we can quickly see there is a point in time where there are items that are ready for sprint. So anytime we see a jump in this line, right here it shows us there's an increase in items that are ready for sprint. So the jump is really good. I like to see those uh, increase in there. So this kind of tells me uh, it looks like a stepping, uh, you know, stepping stairs right now, stepping steps. So that tells me that along the way, there is a set cadence uh, that the team may be on. Every so often, for example, uh, you might be practicing backlog refinement. So in this instance, I do know that this team does backlog refinement every Thursday. So when you see the count jump, that kind of gives you an indication that, you know, there are some uh, backlog refinement happening right there. Also, uh, the indication of, um, it looks like, one, this is a, Scrum team, they're running sprints. Uh, by looking at this also, I can tell, you know, what is their cycle. It looks like the cycle is about a 10 working days. So it's about two weeks cycle for the team. As you can see, the jump in increment right here, right? So the jump again tells you uh, that teams are doing that. The other part is that looking at uh, when they deploy. The last state in, in this that, uh, chart for them is deployment. So deployment here tells me that you know, they are probably on a specific cadence for deployment. Deployment in this example looks like it's about you know, a day or two after uh, spring ends. So this shows you a couple of things, right? So this is what I like to do is you know, take a snapshot of it, um, you know, you know, last 30 days for example, you know, and see what it looks like. So from it, Without even asking the team, I can tell what's happening. The other things that uh, we can use CFD for is that we can see flow. Cumulative flow diagram is basically what it says itself. It's, it helps us look at the flow of work from the moment that it arrives to the moment uh, it, it is ready to, uh, to go out on the moment it went out. So it allows us to see that flow. It's part of what we call a queuing uh, process right it's looking at your queue process you know from beginning to end you know at each stage and seeing where your work is so it allows us to see the flow well we, when we look at the chart itself we want to see that there are a consistent uh, band the band is not too tight the band is not too big there's no irregularity in terms of the width uh, that shows on here anytime we see there's a big uh, build up where you see this big uh, blue bulk here it tells you that things are stacking up right so this is uh, something that says hey now things are not moving this is where uh, bottleneck happens right this is what it looks like it also helps us look at uh, basically again cycle time and lead time so cycle time in this instance will be anything that is from uh, you know, in progress to done. So in this instance, I will look at things that in terms of uh, from development all the way to, uh, I would say, ready for deployment. So I'll count those things in there and that will be my uh, cycle time. 
The other thing will be my lead time. How long is my lead time? Uh, my lead time is from the beginning all the way to, from the first state all the way to the last state. Uh, one thing to note in here is that for cumulative flow diagram, you, are, you do not expect to see a dip. It is a cumulative flow over time. So it is expected to go up. So anytime you see a shifting down, then we have a problem. Now in this example I have is that I am showing a backlog. Now when I look at this chart right now, uh, it shows that there is a max at 100, right? And that's where the backlog. So it tells me that the backlog starts with about 100 and it stays consistent throughout the 30 days that I'm seeing here. We can easily filter that out. So we can say, okay, if I don't want to look at backlog, all I want to look at is from the time that it says ready for sprinting, uh, which is, you know, when you get work uh, after the team has looked at it, it's now ready for sprinting. Uh, it's in your, uh, what we call, ready state to be pulled into a sprint. So when you look at that, uh, that gives you a much better idea, shows you a much uh, better picture. The reason why I don't want to look at a backlog is that backlog is merely sometimes it's just a list. It is an ordered list, ideally, but also it's a prioritized list. Now, not all the times is, you know, the priority doesn't, is not fixed all the time. There might be some fluctuation, right? Now, your backlog may be consistent, maybe not. It might be that there is uh, things coming in all the time or things going out too. You may throw stuff out. So that's the time that I would say that might cause you some confusion if you have that backlog in there because it's in that state. Uh, oftentimes, E4 Scrum Team, I don't look at those uh, because you know, to me is that I want to look at the state as far as when it's ready for the team to work on. So backlog refinement, once it's done, I want to know is that ready in that state, ready to be pulled in. So I want to measure those. Now, some of you may be practicing uh, a different thing. For example, in safe, you may be practicing an extra step called uh, uh, backlog replenishment, meaning, right? You may have that, which basically is all you're doing is you know, another layer on top of your, before you do refinement, you're getting your stories to a good enough state so that then it can be talked about at back of refinement. So if you have that state, track that state, and that's fine here. So whatever state you have, you should probably track it. The other part is that the, uh, the slope of it gives us some information as well. In here, you can look at what we call the arrival rate. Uh, that's just the slope of this line based on the, you know, when things comes in. Uh, and then also we can look at the completion rate, which is again, you can draw a line. Now you can draw this line and then make a projection out. And this will tell you and at what point when things will be done. In this example, for example, I know that I have a hundred items in my backlog. Looking at this, I can draw a line. I can safely, you know, project and forecast. It says at some time, this is what it would be mean by done. This is what everything will be done by. So again, it is forecasted a simple line drawn. That's all it is, okay? So this is another way of doing that. Um, you know, you can use the numbers before. You can simply do the, you know, if you're finishing 10 items uh, every sprint, uh, and then if you have 100 items in there, then you know that you have 10 items, uh, about 10 sprints, right? So you could do that too, uh, but this is another way of looking at it. Uh, that way I don't have to shift to data that much. I'm just looking uh, at a nice uh, diagram, a nice chart. And from that, I can make some uh, assessment of it. Now, sometimes when we look at this uh, CFD, it doesn't mean things are bad, especially when we look at deployment, for example. Deployment doesn't have to be smooth all the time. Sometimes your business or your customers cannot uh, are not in a good spot to do a what we call a daily or uh, deployment or daily updates you can possibly maybe you can only do you know once a month for example uh, and and that will show up in here too so when you look at this yes it is flow it is showing you flow it is showing you possibly bottleneck but what we're doing is that we're looking at this diagram and then deciding what we want to ask then start asking questions so that's how I would use CFD. Uh, you know, it's one of those tools. I love it, uh, but it took me a while to get to it. Hopefully this will help you understand more of it. That's it. Bye.